So I'm here with Scott Mansky and his 4430 John Deere. Um, now, Scott, you retired from farming. Yes, I have. But you farmed for a long time, right? You grew up on this farm? Yes, I grew up my whole life here. Okay. And you farmed until? Up within f well, last year when Marty bought it all. Okay. And a yep. few years before I rented it out, but otherwise up until then, it's been uh, eight years. I sold sold the cattle stuff. So I Yeah, just, so you were a dairy farm. Dairy farm, pigs, yep. and beef. Okay. All three. And cash crop. Yep. And you originally farmed with your dad my and your dad brother. And my brother and my cousin. Okay. Yep. And uh it was just down to you yes. at the end. Yep. I just so. couldn't do it anymore, not by myself and stuff, and getting close to retirement, so I, I just gave it up. And dairy changed. Yes, it has. It's not Very the, much so. Yeah, it was not the business it was when you started. Yeah, a milk hauler could get, pick up seven just going down the road in the neighborhood. Now he, he has to go from three counties to pick up one, you know, just a truckload. Yeah. That isn't even a semi. And they used to be able to do that right within the neighborhood. Yes. Now it's, you know, the semis are the bulk tanks. Yep. How many cows did you guys milk? Milked 101. 101 in a tie stall barn. Correct. We'll have to show the barn. Yep. Because that's really neat. Yep. Um, but the 4430 for a long time was, was the, your big horse. Yep. That was the biggest tractor we had for a long time. Yep. And you don't even know how many hours are on her, do you? It would be 20-some thousand. Yeah. Because, like, this is probably the third motor. Yep. And she's been, she was turned up, right? Yes. She had 100 and probably 60, 70 coming out of it. Yeah. Back in the day, that was a lot. You know, now it's nothing, you know. And she wasn't pampered either. It worked. Oh, no, like, yeah, it was pretty much abused. Yeah. You got everything you could out of it. Yep. And... You never touched the rear end in it, have you, you said? Nope, the rear end was never touched. So It's, it's pretty well wore out, but I mean, it, it was never gone through. And it's kind of interesting on this one. Um, it's just two remotes, right? Yep. But it's 20.8s, and it's had 14 L's on it, yep. as long as you could remember on the front. Yep. So she's had tires. Yep. Um, did you run band duels on it at one time, too? Um, uh, bolt, uh, pushed in and yep, hub the, hub mounts. Okay. Yep. Um, but no air stack on it. Nope. But yeah, the 20.8s, 14 L's, eight bolt front hubs. Yep. But it's a synchro. Correct. Which is, so the synchro is usually on a cheaper tractor, but this one had, you know, big tires. Yep. Uh, sound guard cab. Yep. Originally it had air conditioning, right? Right. Um, so it had a lot of options on it, but just the synchro transmission right. instead of no quad. Nope, no quad, no power shift. Yep. So when did you get the tractor? God, it had to be back in the 70s. Okay. Late, late 70s, early 80s, and we bought it used. Did, did it come from Menominee Equipment then? Yes. Okay, so you, Menominee Equipment was your closest. Yeah, that was who, who we dealt with. Yep, and that's Tractor Central today. Yes. Um, but, uh, yeah, back then, and I bet when you got it, that was quite a tractor. Yes. And when you got it, that would have been a five plow, you know, yeah, five, six plow, but we got hills, you know, so we love it. And then we could never stop. We had to stop plowing yep. because of the ASAS or the, you know, your soil conservation board. So we stopped plowing. The only plowed was like two little, probably a 40 acres and probably 60 acres out of the whole works. Otherwise it's hills, so everything was chisel plowed. Yep. But was this your first cab tractor? Yes, we've never had one other than this. Although it was all 40, 4020s and this was the big tractor. So was that something else when you got that sound guard cab? Yep, yep, it was nice. Were the neighbors jealous? I, I don't know if they were or not, but that was our only tractor we had. And it was yeah, back in the day, that was a lot of horsepower, you know. Yeah. And air conditioning and a radio yeah, all and that stuff. heat. Yep. Um, so you can see the fenders are 
or she's awful rusty today in them fenders, right? Yep, yep. I mean, she's had a lot of time gone through. My guess is probably that rust came from uh, wintertime manure, right? Yep. So milking 101 cows in a tie stall barn, you had to have a pretty good sized manure spreader. Yeah, well, 430 bushel. Yep, because you didn't have a manure pit. You hauled every day, right? Hauled every day. So, yeah, that's a big spreader. The 4020 wasn't going to handle your manure. Yeah, spreader. only in the summertime it could haul it, but not in the wintertime. Right? So, yep. you, the old 4430 then uh, did all the hard work in the spring and yep. all summer because you pulled the chopper too, right? Yep, chopper, all that stuff. What'd you have for a chopper, by the way? We had a, uh, at, at that time was a 3950 John Deere. Okay. Chopper, and then we went to a New Holland because John Deere for a while stopped making them. So yep. we went to the New Holland and then that's when they sold out. Yep. But so do all the big work all, you know, all summer and spring and everything. And yep. then in the winter, yep. pull the manure spreader yep. every day. It pretty much start you have to, every day. She started up to do something. Yeah. And it didn't let you down much, did it? Nope. The only time it didn't run was put a new motor or something in it. <laughs> yeah. And where was that work done? Uh, at Menominee or well, Durant? Some, some were at Menominee and some were at Duran. Okay. So both are Tractor Central both now. Both Tractor Central, yep. Yep. But uh, she, she did a lot of work. And I'm guessing, I didn't check the serial number, but I'm guessing it's a pretty early one because um, it's got... The yellow seat, and that it's always had a yellow seat. Yes. It never had the cloth seat. Right. And it's got slab weights on the front. It doesn't have suitcase weights. Right. So I'm betting she's pretty early. Yep. But. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been a hard working tractor, that's for sure. Did it, uh, when they overhauled it, did they put 50 series pistons in it? Well, that I couldn't tell you that. I did it remember. start better? Because. No, it has never started good. It okay. has never, She's ever off. started good. <laughs> you can plug this thing in and still use ether on it on a very cold day. Yep. And in the summertime, if you walk by it with a bowl of ice cream, you might have to. Yep. It's never been a, an easy start. And summertime was okay. Wintertime, that was a hard starting tractor. Yep. Very, very hard. Yep. Do you remember back then what this tractor probably cost used? At the time, I think we paid thirteen thousand for it. Okay, which was a lot of money. Yes. So, for your dad to go from a forty twenty to this, I yeah. bet that was something right. to him. We had two forty twenties, and then once we owned a seven hundred six international. Yep. And I think we traded that for another forty twenty, so we had three forty twenties in this. Okay. And then we had the forty six forty. Yep, you ended up, the 4640 came along later? Yes, a lot later. That was back in the 90s when we got that. Okay, which, so you, well, the 4640 then just did big work because it, it couldn't have pulled the manure spreader, right? Cause right, it was, and yeah, because that's a straight thousand. Yep. Where this one was 540 a thousand. So the 4640 comes along and the 4430 is still working all the time. Yep, pretty much it was more or less hauling manure and stuff like that you know yep otherwise it is never really you know sat sat still too often so were you pretty young i mean you were a younger farmer so when did you did you come right back to the farm out of high school yeah i i was been here my whole life okay so when this came around you were a pretty young guy were you pretty excited to well, get yeah, this you got to see this one because i mean she would take um uh, seven and nine shank chisel plow right up over the point and never back off. I mean, she was souped up. We had the duels all the way around on it. So, yeah, I mean, she had had plenty of power. And I remember chisel plowing come up over the hills when she blew up the first time. Yep. And took her back down. I think Duran and I mean, came, put a new motor in it, brought it home like three or four days later, and put it back to work again. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, that was a, that would have been a big deal to you as a young yep. guy to have a tractor yep. like this. Yep, I, I graduated in '77. Okay. So, yep. We had this one, then we got went down in the '80s and stuff. Late '80s, I think, and got the '46 40. Drove down to down by Milwaukee. There was a guy that was selling. He'd go down into Iowa, buy them, and bring them back, and then sell them up here. Okay. And that's where we bought that one. That one only had. 
2,200 hours on it. Okay. When we got that one. How many hours do you think this one had on it when you got it? I suppose we were in the 13, 1400, somewhere in there. Okay. So it was pretty new. Yep. Um, Maybe two of that, but I don't remember that part. But it was used and we got it. Well, and if, if you graduated in 77, this was, 4430s were a brand new tractor yet in yep. 1977. Yep. I remember we getting it from up there and they said they had one in. So dad went up and looked at it. And he liked it. And he tried, they asked if we wanted to use it. And we brought it out here and tried it and stuff. And, well, you know, back in the day when that thing was 180 horsepower, you know, it'd run away with anything that we ever had. So it had plenty of power. Yeah. So we just put the duels on it. And Do you really like that cab? Yes. The cab was nice. I mean, because we'd never had a cab. You had a heat hauser. Right. You know, a windbreak type thing. That's what you had for the wintertime for the 4020s. You never yeah. had no cab. Well, then we had a older 4020 cab that we put on. Like one of them year-round ones. Okay. Yeah, the most worthless thing. On the, we were so cold in there anyway. So what the hell have it? So, right. Yeah. If you didn't have heat, then yep. it's yeah. I think we took the, we just took the unloader or something, pulled it off. And, oh, hell with it. It wasn't worth it. Yep. Yep. Like you said, there was no heater. You know, there was snow and stuff. You know, the, none of that stuff worked on it. Worth a damn. So. Yeah. It better off just having a heat hauser. It was warmer in there than it was in that cab, that year-round cab. It was supposed to be great. It probably was in its time, but when we had one, it wasn't that great. Right. Well, compared to the 4430, it sure was. Yes. Uh, and then we got this one, then it was like you're riding in Cadillac compared to what we were used to. Yeah. <coughs> well, you have a radio. Yep. Was radio. this one AM, FM? Yep. Um. And uh, still, it looks like it's still the John Deere one. Yep. John Deere radio. Yep. Was this a tilt steering one too? Yes. Okay. So she was tilt steering, heat and AC. Yep. Um, now, I see it's got lights up on top of the cab. Did it also have the lights on the fenders at one time? Yes. The lower one? Yes. Okay. So it had good lighting. Yep. Yeah, you could run all night with this thing back in the day. That was something, boy. Yeah. Well, and I bet, you know, well, Darian. You did a lot of that field work at night yep. because after, after done milk and you went out for at least a while. Yep. So boy, that really helped to have that cab if you were going to go back out there. Yep. And, but we were just used to. I mean, back in the day, we we weren't used to a cab. Yep. I mean, you just sat out there no matter oh. what. So, did the forty four thirty allow you guys to grow the farm? Like, could you run more ground then? We didn't at the time. It was later on when we bought the next door neighbor's place and stuff, but we had, I think that was the tail end of this one and the bigger one started. Okay. That's when that came into play. So when you, once you graduated and you were on the farm all the time, did you guys expand the dairy then? Yes, because we only had, the barn only held 63. After, after the barn fire we built back, then it was 63. Then the tornado or high winds came and tore the roof off. Then we expanded again. The 80 storm. Yep, 80 storm. Then we came back and put another two rows on the other side. So 38 on the other side and 63 on this side. So that 80 storm, were you guys okay on the insurance? Because there were a lot of guys whose insurance company, they had like down by Ellsworth, they had that Martell Mutual. Yep. And the, the insurance company basically, you know, had to no we were fine they went bankrupt yep, so we were fine okay yeah so at least at least we, that yep we burnt the burnt the, the the barn burnt down in 72 then we replaced it with the main farm and then lean to and then um, back side okay another two rows when you uh when you updated the barn then did you uh or did you have a pipeline right away yes okay so, but that was a big deal to go get a pipeline in the early 70s. Yep. Yeah, a lot of guys were still using, you know, yep. step saver and buckets. Yep. And yeah, we had a pipeline when the barn burnt. And we put it all back in. It was all surge. And then we put that all in. Then they uh, refigured the um, pipeline so that you could put in two more rows of cows on the other side and bring that into this pipeline and okay. into the milk house. So... Well, and we'll, they state improved. Otherwise, you you know, when they get done, they have to figure if this is going to do what it's supposed to. Search yep. has to send that into the state. 
and then you're allowed to do it. Yeah, we'll have to show that because yeah. it's a, yeah, it's, I suppose it wasn't as easy because there was four rows of cows. Right. It had to be the big mains yep. coming in. Then she'd split and go out around and come back in the other main. Yep. And you had to have enough water and you had to have air injection to make it slug. Okay. So it'd wash. Yep. Like that. It, it worked. We never had no high bacteria counts or anything. Okay. And then when you built the barn uh, and then the addition, yep. did you add silos then too? We, or, uh, the two silos next to the barn were in 80s. One was the hay unit was in, when the barn was burnt down or put back, and that was the hay unit. Yep. Then in 80, we put the corn unit next to it. And the hay unit out here on a bunk. Okay. Plus the stuff, you know. So before the before that, you probably square baled a lot of hay. Oh, a then. lot of hay. The hay. I mean, back in the day, you even filled the forty by sixty pole shed to feed the young stock. <laughs> because we never, then we got the round baler. Okay. So, but otherwise, it was all filled up. Uh, hay mow was plumb full. The back behind the barn or the pole shed that was plumb full. So you probably did fifteen, twenty thousand. Oh, easy. Yeah. The tail. <coughs> the it was twenty five hundred. Twenty yeah, two thousand in the middle for straw. Twenty five hundred on on one end and thirty five hundred at the other end. That's what the barn held. Okay. For bales. Yep. That's a lot of. Yep, a lot of work. And so then, then we bailed and. And then bail, bail, drove in there and threw it out, threw it up, and stacked it. It wasn't there was no conveyor in there. But you, like there is the barn. Oh, you had you do have a mow conveyor in the barn. Yes. Okay. Yep. Was that a deer mow conveyor? Yep. Wow. Okay, I've never seen a deer yep. mow conveyor. Yep. That's pretty well, cool. Oh, this is a hay elevator without the transports. What right. It is. And yep. They just put it on top of cross piece rafters and had to kick off. So That's yeah, you have that plate to kick the bales off yep. wherever you want yeah, to you stack. Just kept, it had chains on it. You just kept moving it to wherever you wanted. Yep. It yep. Snap it back on and away she go again. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that well that was probably a big deal when you got yeah, it. Yeah, see so you didn't have to carry it back in the day. You have to throw it off by hand, carry it by hand, stack it. And when you got the conveyor boy, you're you're coming up in the world. Yeah. Oh, you made a lot of hay all summer long, right? Yep, yep pretty much. How many uh, kicker racks did you have? Four. Four kicker racks. Yep. Um, so then would your uh, would your dad bail and then you and your brother unload or? Yeah, well, yeah, back in the day, then uh, pretty much. And then my brother unload, we'd be up, the, I and my cousin would be up in the haymow. Okay. And then at the tail end, we would just bail all day. And then all, all three of us, brother and cousin, would go up and stack it. Yep. Just let it pile. Yep. And then go after chores, run up and stack it real quick, you know, like that. So okay. when, my, when my dad couldn't do it anymore, that's how we did it. So Okay. But then we were starting to get the round baler and stuff so we could make round bales. And then you start chopping a lot more, yeah, right? Correct. So so you didn't have did you chop anything before the silos of Yeah, we had a small cement silo okay. back in the old barn. But yeah, that it that was, was just corn silage then. No, that was haylage. Oh, it was haylage. Yep. Okay. Well, I, I think maybe half a dozen times I've had corn silage. Otherwise, it's all haylage and really? high moisture corn. Yeah, I've never very very rare. That one time we did had corn silage and we ran out of hay. Okay. You know, a dry year. Like eighty eight. Yep. You had dry year. You just you got more tonnage out of your corn silage. Yeah. You know. Yep. Huh. So what what did you have for a square baler? Uh, 337. 337 deer. Yep. So that was a bigger one. A bigger pickup. Yep. So you didn't even have to rake it if you didn't have to. You could leave it dry. Yep. She'd still pick up the full yeah, cause five a, foot swath. A 327 probably was the one that replaced the 336. Like they were real close in size. Yeah, 336 was a regular smaller pickup. Yep. 337 was the same baler. But it's wider, wider pick. pickup. Okay. Yep. Is that a good baler for you? Yes, it was. Yep. And we, I, I, I bought that, bought that used. 
They would bought them from people that would run them one season and get rid of them. Yep. Would trade like that. So we got, I think we had to replace um, the knotters, I think we replaced in them. Okay. That was the only thing I've ever done to that. Huh. You could probably shave yourself on the metal that, right. you know, all the stuff, the product that went through that thing. And that, was that a, just a 30 kicker on it with the yellow basket yep. or, okay. Yep. It had the yellow basket, yep. And I suppose you kept that baler a long time because you gradually did less and less. Correct. Bailing. Yeah, we, I ran that till the day we sold out, and I got rid of it all. That was our only baler we ever had. Okay. Otherwise, before, it was a 14T. Yep. The old one where you pulled it out and stacked it on the wagon. Yep, with a chute on it. Yep. yep. Okay. Otherwise, that was our only baler. Ha. Huh. That lasted all, all that time. Wow. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a lot of hay. Yes, it is. A lot of work. Yeah. Do you have uh, – so – Back you had then, trouble sleeping at night, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. You, <laughs> you went to bed. You didn't go out running around. You no. Went to bed. And then you had to get up and milk. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's – did you guys have a, um, a hay bind early on, or did you have a sickle mower and conditioner? Uh, and... All that, yep. Sickle mower or the sickle mo uh, hay crusher. Yep. The rake, yep. So it was a big deal when you got a – First hay got bind. a 480 hay bind from John Deere. Okay, 480, that's that one with that solid yellow reel, right? Yep, and it lifted up in front and went down like that. And yep. then we had the big fins out the back. Yep. Yeah, it almost looks like an international. Yes, it did. Did that have metal? Nope, uh, that one had rubber on it. Oh, it did? Yep. Okay. That's the only one. That's, we had that one, then we had a 1218. 1219? 12, 12, something like that. And then after that, then we went went to a New Holland. Okay. Because that was, at the time, then we went to a uh, disc spine. Okay. New Holland, because that was what, what I, when we were, they were in the transition of, you know, being hay binds to disc binds and stuff like yep. that. So we found this one, it was less than a year old, and we found it and bought it. And that's, the one we, that's the one we finished with. Okay. Yeah, that was a, I mean, boy, think of the, Think of the labor that changed going from yep. the way you started baling. So you'd cut the hay with a sickle mower, yep. condition it. Yep. Let it lay there and then go out with the yep. rake and rake it all up. And then take the 14T and some two guys would have to bail because one would yep. bail and yeah, one would stack. That was my job. I drove the tractor and my dad stacked on the wagon. Yep. yep. And then have to mow all that. Yep. So to go from that to that was on the old barn, so all you have was an old grain elevator that dumped it in the middle. Then you had to carry it yeah. both ways to stack it. Right. Wow, yeah. that's and so to go from that to a disc bind and a chopper and Correct. you yep. know, yep. it. Uh, yeah, but a lot of all our stuff was from, at that at that time was from Monami equipment. Okay, so oh, mostly John. Did they sell New Holland there too? No, New Holland was um, O and R. O and R. Okay, because I know Mondovi sold New yes. Holland and John Deere. Correct. And Ellsworth Equipment sold New Holland, and they were owned by Durand. Yep, right there across from the Senex, right there. Yep. Wasn't it there. Yep. Yep. So um, at yeah. that time, when we bought that. We bought that um, from Sardinsky's. Oh. In. Uh, Mosinee or Marathon? Uh, green, green, or one over there. By Wausau. Green. Wausau. Yep. Wheeling and dealing. Wheeling and dealing Al Swiderski. Yep. But I mean, it was a, somebody, was one of them deals where they only, hell, the rolls were almost like perfect on it. Yep. I mean, it, it hadn't done a lot of hay. And so I don't know where they got it from, but it was nice. Same with our chopper. Our chopper was almost like new when we got it. So I don't know if they got it from a sale or what, but. What did you have for chopper boxes then? Uh, back in the day, we had HS. Oh, h &S. Okay. You yeah. didn't have deer chopper nope. boxes. HS. Okay. And John Deere sold them. Yep. At when they had the steel, two of them had steel bottoms, you know, and steel tops. Yep. And all steel. Steel framework, steel, you know, running yep. across board. The only wood was in them was the floor. Right. Yep. And then we went to the later ones where, you know, they were wood cross pieces and stuff like that but yep 
They're uh, good boxes. Yep, they were. We, we had no trouble with them. Um, so this pulled the chopper. Did you bail with this? So if you wanted to, you could. We very, very rarely had the 4020s for that. Okay. But it ran okay. the round baler, though. This ran the round baler? Yep. Did you, when you got a disc bind, did this cut? Yeah, hey, yeah, this is what you had to run the disc Because it took more power. To, yep. Okay. Yep. So she took a lot of power to run a disc bind. Yeah. So this 4430 didn't really get an easy life until you sold the cows. Right. Pretty much, yep. Yeah, the disc bind, them, them things pulled hard. A 4020, if you're on level, fine. But if you had to climb a hill, yeah, them 4020s had all they could handle that. Dispine. Yeah, because you probably had what that thirteen footer that yep. like fourteen thirty one or yep. okay. Yeah. So she she did a lot. Yep. So when the cows left, you did crop farm for yeah, a little I, while. I think two seasons and then I rented it out to a friend and then after that and then he passed away. So then uh, Marty came and got it. So when you crop farm for those couple of years what was the 4430 doing? Did you plant with it or, or no, at 20.8s and 14Ls, you probably, you plant with the 4020. Yep. Plant okay. with the 4020 and the 46 did the tillage and the, you might have chisel plowed with or something with this. Okay. But that, that, by that time, you know, we had the 46, so that did everything, you know. The 46 did everything like this did when we had it. So you have a six row planter? Nope. Did a four, four row wide yet? Yep. So you were still wide rows. Yep. You never did go narrow row. Nope, never went narrow. Really? Yeah, 220 average for yeah. corn. Did you have a combine? Yep, we had a 6620 Titan II side hill, four-wheel drive. Okay. Yeah, those are a cool combine. because yeah. You flip a switch and you can climb a point, <laughs> no problem. Yeah, you need you farmed hills. Yep, but I mean, it was so weird because it'd be snow on the ground and you could go Flip the switch, you can make a U-turn on the side hill and come right back down and never spin a wheel. But yeah. you couldn't make it if the the back wheels were off. Right, right. She, she would spin out before she went to the top. Yeah, and those are kind of, um, they're cool because they didn't, they made those longer. The 9500 was out, and they still made the 6620 yep. side hill Titan II. For, right, correct. I had one of the later models that went down to Pigeon Falls and picked that up. There was a guy that was selling out, and he had a, I should have bought it, the 9500 9, side hill yep. four-wheel drive. And yeah. I got the 6620 instead. Okay. Then, went, when I, and then I had that a few years and went through that all, all new uh, straw, uh, straw racks, yep. concaves, rasp bars, went through the whole thing, new sieves. Yeah. Then I, after that, then we... Gave it up. And you were using the combine for but when the livestock were here because you fed shell corn, right? Yeah, fed high moisture cob corn. Oh, you, you high moisture cob corn. Yeah. So Grilled. what'd the hogs eat? Shell corn. Okay, so you had a bin for the hogs. Yeah, bin for the shell corn and a silo for the cob corn. Okay, so you never fed the hogs any high moisture corn? Just nope. dry? All, all dry. Okay, so then you ground feed, right? Yep, every day, two and a half ton. Really? Every day. So the 4020 do that? Yep, pretty much. Um, what'd you have for a feed mill? Gale? We had uh, two gale, three gales and a, two bear cats. Oh, the old bear cats. Yeah. They, were, they were bigger. Yep. That's why we went to them. And we ground when the cattle were, before the cattle were uh, high moisture corn, then we ground two to three t uh, feed mills every day. It wasn't pigs, it was cows. Every day. Two to three batches a day. A, yeah, every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. You must have, you must have wore out some feed mills. Yep, we went through, yeah, th uh, three gales and they were a ton and a half. Yep. Then they were two and a half ton bear cats. Okay, we hydraulic went, drive, the bear cat. Yes, the last one was. Who sold bear cat? At that time, it was Dran Implement. That's where really? we got it from. Okay. Yeah, otherwise, that, that, that was one of our better feed mills. Them things were built. They had huh. universal joints on them, big as basketball. Yeah. They were, they were well, very, very heavily built huh. feed mill. You could just pour the groceries to them. Well, then, when you got the, when you built the, the grain o -matic, Madison grain o -matic yeah. silo, 
that was a big deal because then you didn't have to grind feed as much. Right. All I had then after the tail end, then we're, feed mills were getting to a thing of the past. Yep. They were stopped, really stopped making them. Now I see they're making them again. Yeah. Out there at O&R's got our Johnson stuff out there. They've got two feed mills now, new ones. Yep. Back in the day, they were starting to, that was getting the thing of the past because high moisture corn was coming into play. Yep. So then my brother had to do that all the time. And so then when we got to the tail end, I just had Durant, or uh, Menominee Farmers Union just come yep. out and get the corn, take it back, grind the feed and bring it back and put it in things. Yeah, because labor became, I mean. I mean, he was uh, not a very big man, my brother. Yep. And he just couldn't do it anymore. He was such a little guy. And that's all he'd done is pretty much his whole life, grind feed. And I just he couldn't do it anymore. I didn't want him to have to go through that. So I put him, we did it this way. Went to, went to Dran, or um, Menominee Farmers Union. They came and got the corn. We dried it and stuff. They just came and got it. Yep. Or once in a while we'd have, we'd deliver corn yep. and have it there for, so when they did grind. Would they grab a semi-load at a yep. time? Stuff like that. Yep. Yep. Okay. So then you really weren't paying storage. You were storing Correct. it here. Yes. Okay. And we didn't, or they would come out and actually get it, fill up their elevator truck, take it in and grind it, feed and bring it back like that. Yep. Like that. That's how we'd love, love. Till the last three, three or four or five years we did that before we. My brother passed away. So the high moisture uh, ear corn, did you have a corn picker? Nope. Oh, that you just did it with the combine. combine. You had a cob saver sieve. sieves in it. Take out all the sieves and put in that one with the big holes. Yep. And all your cob and all that stuff fell would, in. And went would you run the concave a little tighter so it would break the cobs? Uh, it, it pretty much it would do just about like you would do if a little bit tighter, but not much. Okay. But the cobs, instead of going out, the back they fell in went into the tank and came into the your thing to your roller mill and up she went so would you run the fan speed higher just so the husks would blow out yeah that pretty much okay and you were combined fairly wet yeah probably 28 30 would be a lot but it was right anywhere from because you'd have 25 corn yep but it would be more higher moisture with the cob yep but your corn was 25 26 and then if you ground it, then you'd be in the low 30s. And the Madison had, those were good at keeping corn, and they were good at unloading with that lay dig, right? Yes. Yep. So you didn't have to worry about it flowing. Oh, no, it had no problem. It yep. all flow like it was supposed to. Yep. yep. So that was, yeah, that was quite a deal when you got the Madison. Yeah. You know. Heck, we used to have a, a corn crib that we'd fill the bins, and we'd put corn, um, put in posts on the end, put in two by sixes all the way to the roof. So that was the end part of the building. And then we fed out of the south. So it was right to the peak all the way through that. It was like a pole shed inside, a plumb full of the roof. And then went outside with three rings of snow fence behind the silo huh. that, that was cob corn. What'd you have for a picker then way back? Two four, 234. IH. Yep. Okay, was that mounted? Yeah. Yes. On that 706. Finger pinching. Yep. Oh. That was a son of a gun. Put that on and off every time. It yeah. sat right here where we're standing. Who was it? I got to look back, but I wonder, it might have been John Huber. So where did that 706 maybe get traded in at? That I couldn't tell you. You traded it for a 4020. At? But you don't remember what dealer you traded? <sighs> that might have been Duran. Uh, maybe. I don't remember that. Because John Huber got a 706 with a mounted picker that he ran for a while. And uh, I'll have to ask him about that. But um, I, don't, I don't remember you know, when it was sold. Yep. I remember back in the day, I ran it with a 400 International. Okay. That was, I got that job. And that's, um, that's why I wear hearing aids today. You know? <laughs> yeah. You sat down in them screaming chains and rollers and stuff. Yep. Hey, you got out at the end of the day and stuff. People would talk to me and I couldn't tell you what they were saying. Yeah. It'd, it'd be two or three hours later before my hearing would come back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we did a lot of things. Stupidly. Yeah. Well, you didn't know any different back then. Right. 
Well, that's where the 4430 was probably, I mean, to sit in that cab and it's quiet. Yep. Like that. Even at the tail end and stuff, I'd, they were doing stuff for this. I had a round deal with a 4020 with, you know, no cap. That was yeah. no big deal. Yeah. Yep. So, of all the tractors, you got a favorite? Probably back in the day, I really enjoyed the 46. Okay. I did a lot of work on the 46. Okay. Yeah. That thing, another thing, too, that 46 had 18 fours. 42s? Oh, it's right over here, 38s. But that would go better than this one with two twenty point eight thirty eights. So I wonder, should we walk over and sure. look at it? Because that'll, um, yeah, maybe those are eighteen four thirty eight. Yep. And that thing would go anywhere more. You could go through a wet hole with that where you couldn't with the forty four. Well, and axe or cast duels on this. Yep, axe actually came it like that. So, how many hours are on this one? Probably eight. So it's not real high, but she's getting up there. Yeah. Um, is this power shift or quad? Quad. It is a quad. Yep. Must be an '82 model, though. That I couldn't. I don't remember that. I believe so. Yeah, yep. we had this. We you know, and then they got the solid cast iron wheels. Yep. So she, so she probably pulled pretty good. Yep. Was it turned up some then too? To a certain extent. Okay. Um, they see and everything. So this one didn't rust and stuff the way. No. You see, like this one here, you know, rusted because going down the salted yep. roads in the winter and time stuff. with yep. and manure and, yeah, and everything. So did the cab on this one stay a little bit better? Yes, it's clean in there. Yep. Huh. Yeah, but I I think the forty four thirty is kind of the one that that one I got abused. That was the horse. Yeah. I mean. Now that was abuse. I mean, that you put that th through living hell. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know that's that says something about how good these these tractors. Yep. Um, which, okay, so you can just read it yet. Menominee equipment. Yep. I yeah. can't remember who had it, but when we got it, we thought we had the world by the ass. Yeah, I yeah. But she's been good. Oh, yeah, she's been good, a good tractor, but boy, we put it through its paces, that's for sure. Yeah, she should get a restoration. <laughs> I'd rather spend my money on something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. It wouldn't be cheap to do all that because I've heard of other people doing that stuff that costs money to do that. Yep. Oh, yeah. you got to gut them and start putting them back together. That isn't cheap. No. So you keep her around, put her on the snowblower. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, well, yeah, should we look at the barn? Sure. Quick? All right. So this is the milk house, all surge. Oh, yep, all surge, because that... Steiner, we, right? Uh, no, uh, Ryder, surge, Menominee. Oh, okay. Right where that bait shop is on the corner. Oh, okay. North of the bridge. Yep. Yeah, that was Ryder surge. Okay. Yep. So... I mean, surge, even the surge uh, white bulk tank. Yep. How many units? Six. Six units. Yep. Um, so, all right, walk me through your milking. So you, you're taking off and you're going to start milking in the morning. Okay. With four rows of stall, how do you do it? Okay, go this way. Head yeah. out. All right. Go to the other side. So you'd start on the west side. Correct. So you could finish by the milk house. Yes, they finished up here when you're done. You start right here. Oh, over here, you start out with. All right, so you'd start in this part. Yep. So Cross you'd... over down at the end and so come yeah. back. So start here. You're, you're taking your milkers down. So you'd, start you'd right milk here. right all, here. So all six are on right here. Yep. And then you'd split them and split go them. three and three. Yep. All and then we got down here, you crossed over because they had a walkway. I disconnected the end stall. And they stepped over and headed back. So two barn cleaners. Three. Three barn cleaners. Oh, I suppose. Yeah. Two out there, one for the calf pen and the barn. Wow. Okay, so Come you on, got Molly. You got one here. Yep. So take the milkers over here. Correct. And 
walk through here. Correct. And then there's the second barn cleaner. Yep, third one right next to it. Third one over. Yep, because of the chain went on the outside. Oh. Right, the right underneath, right on the cement slab. Wow. So then. This he, was the limit we could go to pull 130 some feet and make an L shape and go out. How many horse was the barn cleaner? Was it seven uh, and a half or ten? Sevens. Okay, so seven, seven and a half. Which normal barn cleaner is probably only three, yeah, three four. Three, four, yep. So. But I mean, they were all geared nice and stuff, but that was the farthest because it had to be a lot of weight on one corner to go out. Otherwise, it'd be like that. Just go down and around, come back. Yep. This one here is like this and like that. Oh, wow. So yeah, this that... corner couldn't do any more than what we had here. So that one was probably a smaller motor on that bar. Yeah, that little guy, little yep. Berg. And these are always, I've always had Badger, always bad Badger barn cleaners. Okay. And that was the first one. Then we went to Berg on that one because we needed the high lift paddles to go up the chute. Oh, okay. Yeah, because this is a Badger chain. Yep. Um, was that Anibus or Comro? Comro. Comro? Okay. Every, everything in this barn is 99.9 .9 from Comro. So did Comro build the barn? Yep. They okay. poured the cement in it. Lester built the barn and Comro poured the cement in it. Okay. It was poured in January. Wow. Were you yeah. nervous? No, they came in here and Jack put in like four or five great big heaters. You could drive around in here with a tractor and a king drag leveling off the dirt after it froze yep. on, on thawed. And then they managed the dirt the way they wanted it. So they, the, they built the barn and then poured the concrete? Yes. Ah, okay. Yep. So did you milk, were you milking in part of the barn? Um, and then did you do one part and then the other part so you could milk? Yes, yeah, so we, this here was done first. This is what Jack did. And then over there, that was done. My Lester's came in, built the building. And we had some other guy that my dad knew that poured the concrete over there and put the stalls in. So did you have to rent a barn for a little while after? Yep. when the barn burnt. We went to Clat, the farm's not even there anymore, so we're on E, okay. Paul Clat's place. Yeah, we rented there. We had to dry off at that time, probably 15, 20 cows, because the barn didn't hold that many. Yep. And everything, every day, your hay was bought, your corn was bought. So you sacked up so many things of feed. Oh. You had to throw that truck, you had to fill it full of hay, straw, and we had all that stuff hauled with it every day to, and then so the 80 storm though um just took the roof off so you were able to milk and yes then, and yeah. then they did the addition correct okay yep everything was right the silos stopped the everything was gone up as far as the silo the, well the hay mall ladder over there yep from there to the end was saved okay so uh, everything we owned, sound loaders, they were out in the neighbor's field, sucked them right out of the silo and they were really? out in the field. Yep. Wow. So that young stock went over here. Correct. That's where the calves were. So you'd also, did you have a power feed cart then? Nope. Yeah, oh. it's hand, hand driven. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot. Yep. That is a lot. Um, yeah, look at how that's worn from the calves. Yep. It, so this part, this was built with the original stuff. Yes. Just that part was added. That was added. In yep. Okay. Correct. This here was part of the thing. This was we had the calves here and the sixty-three cows. Were they? Uh, um, so you just bedding pack them every day over yep. there. There were no free stalls or. Oh no! Nope. Yep. Yep. Nope. You swung the gate shut. There was a gate by every door. So you had three pins here. So then you just have to pitch into the gutter. Gutter, yep, scrape them. Okay. Yep. Take the barn cleaner that went on this side, you just scrape this because this was always loose. Yep. The bedding was on the other side. Okay. They come up and eat and drink and stuff, you scrape them. And yep. Huh. Sometimes we had sawdust, sometimes we'd have straw, depending on whatever we had at the time. We had, if you had bedding, because you grew some oats. Yep. For Usually straw. had about 35, 40 acres of oats all the time because we used the oats up for big feed or. Yeah. We wanted it was the bedding. Yep. Yeah, everybody wanted the bedding. The bedding, and, and uh, we always had corn stalks. We rolled corn stalks. That was for the pole shed and the feeding yeah. floor and stuff. 
So the pipeline. Yeah, I didn't look at the pipeline. Down how here, that works. She's around here is where they split them. Okay. Yep. So there were two separate pipelines here, one in over there and one on the other side. Okay. And then they yep. down came here is, down. Yep. And they split down here. Big, so two inch, or is that an inch and a half pipeline? That's two inch. It is two inch. Two inch. And then the, the Big split. vacuum, though. That's yep. like a three. Well, three inch. That, they had to have that to get the volume. Okay. We had two, two vacuum pumps running to make sure that everything was... Up, you know, so if because if the fan or if let's say uh, your milker fell off, yep, you had to hurry up and get it because if you didn't have the three, that's when we've had the three line inch line because otherwise then the other milkers would fall off because you lost yep. your vacuum. So we had two vacuum pumps running. You could could milk with one, but we had two. So it'd take that much vacuum, yes. Wow, so now you always bedded with straw, you didn't do. Um, cow mats. Nope. We had a few couple on the other side in case they had a cow bed. Otherwise, everything was all bedding. Yep. And silo room over there. Did you feed TMR? Nope. No TMR? Nope. Okay. So here's the, the two vacuum pumps. And then plus vacuum. You had that access plus the pumps. You know, that was like a spare. So. Oh, just for... for if it uh, needed a big draw, you had yeah. extra vacuum. You, you could store vacuum on that. Yep. Huh. And then we had, this is a smaller one. The other um, water heater went to hell. The water heater was 125 gallon. Yep. And this whole corner was water heater. Wow. Because it took that much, and the, and the water heater had to be 150. Okay. Wow, that's 150, because it had to be around 100. Had to be 150 going in because it had to be over 100 when it emptied back into the vat. The vat. So they need and the vat, yeah, because there was so much water with Correct. all this. So much, pipeline. all this cold stainless. That water when it came back had to be a certain temperature, otherwise you get like wow. cheesy stuff in the yep thing. I never even thought of that, but that was so no tunnel ventilation. Just we had we, at that time we had airbags. Okay. And they that I would never put them back in the day when you chopped bedding because we had a bedding chopper. Yep, you had a bedding chopper holding all that dust. Well, that was inside the bags. So you had to empty them at least three times a month. Oh, yeah. I mean, them things would be plumb full of dirt, plumb full of dirt. So it'd been better off, but at the time they didn't have tunnel. Yeah, plants. they were probably just coming out. You yep. know, thing. Now here's them when you wanted to know about the. See, this is what they did. They brought them from two into three. Wow. Oh, that, yeah, that is a big pipeline going into the receiver. Yep. And then here was the other one. This is the one that went out the other side. Yep. What split, did it all the way around. Wow. Huh. And see, it split because then it split this half was on this barn. Yep. The other half, when it split, uh, over there went from or over here three to two so one when it came out this one here went and washed one half of the sets wow and then she'd go all the way around them sets come back in yep this one and this one and then she'd come back in and dump wow huh can we see the silo room sure it's right there yeah i love silos it breaks my heart that you're going to take the silos down. Yep. But I, mean, they're, they're, I get it. I understand. It just. So, Lay Dig, of course, in the Madison. Yep. But James Lay in here? Nope. Well, Badger. James Lay, maybe a hoist. Yeah, the James Lay winch. Yep. yep. James Lay is a hoist, but otherwise, the Badger silos. Okay. Silo motors. And, and both Madison, these are Madison silos. This one here was a Rochester. Oh, that was a Rochester. Madison. The one okay. out in the yard was a Madison. Okay, so who built the Rochester? It came out of Rochester, Minnesota. Oh, they, yep. okay. Yep. They still are, I think they're still gold. Yep. But uh, you said Comro built the. Um, That's where I got the parts for all this stuff. Okay. This, so this laid egg on here, so I got. How much this is this an eighty footer or seventy footer? Seventy footer. So mine is only a thirty five footer, and mom and dad had a sixty footer, 
and that tube is half the size and that gearbox is maybe half the size as this one. Oh, okay. This is huge. Yep. Huh. Well, was it set up because of cob meal too? Maybe yep. it was bigger? Right. Okay. It was a cob unit versus yep. shell corn. Yep. The shell corn, like you said, that'd be about, about like that, you know? Right. That's, yeah, that's yeah. what I had. So, so you had always intended to put cob meal in here. You're right. never going to put. Nope. So you is could, the, could use shell corn if you wanted to, but. Is the sweep auger bigger in this one then too? Yeah, the sweep auger is probably like that. Okay, so like on mine, you know, that oh, yeah. sweep is only like, like that. Double. Okay. Yeah, that's really cool. Huh. So this got redone at one time because originally was this blue? Oh, yeah, it's always been this color. Just oh, like what you see. okay. Different that's, motor, but yep. You know, over the huh. so back in the day, they tried to, uh, they're going to replace the motor and then they could never get it to take. So I, every time we try it, it'd go two or three times and it'd go to hell. So I thought, I'd screw this shit. I just went and got the big motor, put it back on, wired it myself, and that's seven and a half, isn't it? Yep. So what was that access that's hole? Where, that's, where, that's where you fit the when we ground, ground feed. Oh, okay. You, oh. you drove with the silo in here, so you put the feed mill in here, and you piled up the feed yep. here, and you shovel it into the cart, Yep. and you shovel it out to the cows. So the feed room was here before the silo? Yes. Okay. The silo, that's why it's a hole in the wall and stuff. Yep. Huh. Is the hatch open on the silo that she's dripping down through the unloader, you think? No, I probably got holes in the tube. Oh, okay. So then the snow and everything melts. It goes, yeah, to the actual auger yep. tube. Because there's a gap in between the auger, yep. or between the silo and, and the There's holes field. where she's rotted out. Okay. So I just leave it. Otherwise, this pump thing would get plumb full of water. So I just leave it like this, and I just change the pail out. Yep. Huh. Well, thanks, Scott. This is really enjoyable. This is a really neat setup. It's, it's too bad that It you was nice. Really, yeah. something in its time, but you know, everything's outdated now. It's like you got to have 2,000 cows and semis to haul your milk. I mean, parlors, and we're not better off. No, nope. right? You're this and this land was better when their manure got spread evenly and yes. hay got rotated. Yep, and but yep. now it's like now they called here the other day from I think it was one of the plumbing places or septic places, and they want to know if we had any land they could run the septic out, you know. And yeah. I thought, I said, I don't own the ground anymore, and they wanted to know who it was, so I don't know if they're going to call Marty. Hmm. I always thought everybody let them people do that. Maybe not, I don't know. Had, um, they used to, if we needed water in the manure pit, they okay. would add, they would okay. haul some out, because we needed, we needed more liquid. Yep, that's true, yep. You know, some but years, some years you had plenty of snow melt or whatever, and it'd go in and it'd be watery enough. But other times you needed to yeah. agitate. And yeah, because my cousin put up harvesters for a living, and they would always inject all the wash water from your milk house. Yep. All got into went, the pit. Went, went to the pit because you get hit, so you have to something to agitate. Yep. Otherwise, it was just like sludge, you know. Yeah. Well, this is yeah. It's it's too bad that this isn't. The way we do things, Andy. Yeah, but, yeah, this is a thing of the past now. You're really big or it don't happen. Um, if somebody wants, is looking for old barn equipment or something like that, are you willing to sell the stuff, like any of the dairy equipment? Yeah, or the, no problem. Yeah, so if somebody sees this and you you need uh, surge parts or any of that yeah. stuff because you're going to remove the barn. Yep. Yeah, it'll be probably the next 10 years, it'll all be gone. Yeah, so... If, yep. if you guys are looking for that kind of stuff, yep. you know, comment and we'll hook you up. Yep. So, all right. Well, thanks, Scott. Okay. Have a good one.